So there's one more topic I want to raise before we start getting into the flux operators, and that is something called the async task barrier framework. And this is actually a framework that I created, and we're going to talk about why I created it. We're going to talk about what it does from an API point of view, what services it provides to users of the async task barrier. And then later, after we talk about the various operators in Project Reactor, we will go and look at its implementation in more detail. It's really quite interesting. There are implementations of the async task barrier for both Project Reactor and RxJava for a wide range of reasons, which mostly have to do with different communities of developers having different aesthetics and different design goals. Project Reactor and RxJava are not identical, so we have to do things slightly differently when we start providing capabilities like async task barrier. And what async task barrier does is it provides an API that can be used to register typically non-blocking task methods that will then be able to run typically asynchronously in the background and provide a single point to wait for them, all those asynchronous operations to finish. And you'll see why we need that in a second. So the reason why we need this, it's, it's useful in its own right, but it's also particularly useful for the way all these case studies are put forward. I'll end up, once we get up and running into the concurrency models supported by Project Reactor, we'll end up having a bunch of test methods all running asynchronously. And then we want to have one place in the program to wait for all those asynchronous test, me test methods to finish running so that we can then get the results printed and then have the program exit in one exit point. And we'll talk about why we need to be able to do that. Otherwise, we don't get useful results. So here's the issue. Most of the test methods in these case studies run asynchronously using something called subscribe on. We'll talk about what subscribe on is shortly. And therefore, the methods that call the test, sorry, the test methods themselves, when you call the test method, the test method you call will return almost immediately, but a bunch of processing is taking place in the background. So the computations that those methods are doing are going to take a while to run, but because they are called asynchronously, the test methods return right away. So here's, here's a simple example. So we, this is one from our mono class in Project Reactor. We're going to make ourselves a big unreduced fraction, and then we're going to go ahead and reduce this unreduced fraction in a background thread. And when we're done, we're going to go ahead and print out the results as a mixed fraction, and we're done at that point. However, if we call this piece of code, this piece of code will start this stream of operations, reducing and um, mixing and printing, in a background thread, and it's going to return right away. So if we're not careful, if we, if we are not thoughtful about how we deal with this, we can have our main program exit while the background task is still running, which will cause chaos and insanity to ensue. So let's take a look at an example of why this is such a problem. If we didn't have something like the async task barrier, which we're going to talk about here, then the main method would fall off the end while a bunch of stuff was running in the background. What happens when the main method returns in a Java program? Anything that's running in the background will be killed, will be shut down automatically, before it has a chance to complete, which is not what we want to have happen here at all, because that would completely defeat the point of running these things in the background if we never got the results from the things running in the background. There's a whole slew of subtleties which we're not going to talk about in detail, having to do with user threads and daemon threads and so on. The best way to think about this is when you run things in the background, they typically run in what's called daemon threads. And if there are no user threads left over, but a bunch of daemon threads left over, Java semantics are to shut all the daemon threads down before they complete. So that's, that's what's motivating this. So here we have the main method. That's what's going to start running this program. And what's going to happen here is we're going to register a bunch of test methods, all of which are going to run asynchronously, with our async task barrier instance. So we say async task barrier register, test fraction reduction async, register test fraction multiplication callable one test fraction multiplication callable two. Each of these things are registered with this async task barrier. So they're all ready to run. They haven't started running yet, but they're ready to run. And then 
Oh, and notice that all these ones I showed here were asynchronous, they don't block. You can also use this for blocking tasks, although it's not nearly as interesting. So let's pretend like we are just focusing on asynchronous tasks, non-blocking tasks. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start running all these tasks. So at this point, all those tasks are going to start running. And actually, I probably should have multiple little gerbil wheels, hamster wheels here, because there's going to be multiple threads running in the background doing the processing from all these different tests. But at this point, everybody starts running in the background. And then the main thread is going to block. And this plays the role of something called a barrier synchronizer. And a barrier synchronizer is a synchronizer that waits for a bunch of other things to finish or to start, depending on how you, you set it up. In this case, we're waiting for things to finish. And this will block the calling thread until all those background threads are done. If we did not have the block here, we just said run tasks, they would all start running, and then we would fall off the end of main, and everybody would be shut down, which would completely defeat the point of what we're trying to do. The async task barrier framework will either asynchronously or synch synchronously run these tasks and ensure the calling method, the thing that's calling all these things to set the wheels in motion, doesn't exit until all the asynchronous processing completes. So the key methods are register, where you register tasks, and run tasks, which returns a mono, as you can see here. And by returning a mono, then that allows the caller to decide whether to block or not. We'll cover the details of this in much finer granularity and much more glory in implementation artifacts and so on after we talk about the reactor's operators in more detail. At this point, it wouldn't make much sense to discuss it because we'd be talking about methods that you wouldn't have been exposed much to yet. So that's the end of the overview of the async task barrier framework.